Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at the importance of conservation for your AQA A-level environmental science. Now this is a lovely lovely topic for an essay so if you want to see an example A star essay for this then we have loads of them over on my website. A-level environmental science. Topic 1. The living environment. Lesson 4. The importance of conservation. In this video, we are moving on to the next section of the living environment topic, where we will begin to look at the importance of conserving biodiversity. Biodiversity can be defined as the variety of life, including both plants and animals found in a particular habitat or across the world. Having a high biodiversity in an area generally makes it more stable and less vulnerable to change. Why should we conserve biodiversity? Morals and ethics. This essentially means that we should conserve biodiversity as it is our duty to do so and it's the right thing to do. This can be tricky though, as everybody has different morals and will prioritise different organisms based on their culture, religion or beliefs. For some organisms, we may find it difficult to see their purpose on the planet, especially if they are seen as pest species for example, mosquitoes. Resources. Another reason why we should conserve biodiversity is because it provides us with so many resources that we now heavily rely on. This includes both plant and animal products. One of the main ones being wood for fuel and timber that we collect from trees. Timber is used in manufacturing and building houses such as timber frames and furniture. Wood is a main fuel source for many less economically developed countries, as it is cheap and accessible. Another resource we get from nature is fibres that are essential in the textile industry. This includes silk, cotton and wool to name just a few examples. Oils are another resource that we harvest from nature and are used in food, soaps and cosmetics. These are obtained from many different organisms. Finally. A big reason is of course food. We rely on plants, animals and fungi as a food resource across the globe and without them we simply would not be here today. Having a wide variety of food resources is important for a healthy, balanced diet. As the human population keeps growing exponentially, we are going to need to continue providing more and more food so maintaining biodiversity should help us do this. New food resources. As we just said, the human population is constantly expanding and with more mouths to feed, we may need to look for potential new sources of nutrition in order to keep up. This includes both plants and animals that could provide a new food source. For example, eating insects for their high protein content and ability to be grown in small spaces fairly quickly. If we maintain the high biodiversity levels across the globe, then it is more likely we will find organisms that are suitable for consumption. Biomimetrics is a process whereby humans take inspiration from nature when designing and manufacturing products. There are lots of biomimetrics across the globe, such as using ultrasound in communication, just like dolphins do. Another example is the splayed feathers at the tip of a bird's wing is used to help design plane wings to reduce turbulence and air resistance, thereby improving fuel efficiency. Make sure you have a few good case studies in your notes. Due to the sheer volume of organisms on Earth, we have not had the chance to study them all yet. This means that there might be some more biomimetric examples out there that could be useful, so protecting biodiversity is important, as it means we may be able to study them one day. Medicines. Another very important reason to protect biodiversity is medicines. We have obtained many medicines from plants, animals and fungi over the years. Again. We have not been able to study all organisms, so there may be some essential medicines out there waiting to be discovered. Some good examples of this are poppies giving us painkillers such as morphine and aspirin from the bark of willow trees. A treatment for HIV AIDS was found in a tropical marine sponge. You never know where the medicines may be found, so protecting and conserving as many organisms as possible is essential in increasing our chances of one day finding them. The image shows penicillin mould, which we use as an antibiotic all the time. Imagine how many people it has saved over the years. 
Physiological research. Physiological research is the study of organisms to try and understand human health problems. The processes we want to study may be easier to observe in animals and it can give us valuable information about potential medicines and treatments when human testing isn't an option. Of course, there are very strict regulations on animal testing now, which companies must adhere to. A really good example of this is researching kangaroo joey development, as they are born quite early before developing in their mother's pouch. We can use observation from this to study baby development in a human womb, as we aren't able to see that like we can with the joey. Pests. Another reason we need to continue protecting biodiversity is that we use a lot of species to control pests. Pests are any species that may reduce productivity in an agricultural system such as aphids or rabbits. We use a wide range of other species to control them such as ladybirds, which predate on aphids or viruses which infect rabbits and kill them. Sacrificial crops are used to give pests something to eat so they do not eat the crops we are trying to sell. There are lots of examples of this across the world and many non-native species have been introduced into new areas to try and control pests. This process has not always been successful and can have quite large repercussions. Genetic resources. We also need to conserve biodiversity as there may be valuable genetic resources inside organisms that we have not been able to study yet. This essentially means there could be genes and DNA of wild species for a characteristic that would benefit our domestic crops and livestock. Domestic organisms tend to have quite low genetic diversity and therefore don't always have the best characteristics. So for example, we may be able to find a gene from a wild plant that we could introduce into domestic carrots to make them more orange and grow faster. The wild varieties are known as crop wild relatives, CWR, meaning they are related to our domestic varieties so we can easily transfer genes between them. Finally, we need to protect biodiversity as it provides us with ecosystem services. This can be defined as the benefits that we get from nature. The examiner wants you to know about five ecosystem services. Number one, atmospheric composition. Natural processes such as photosynthesis and respiration regulate the gases found in the atmosphere and keep them balanced in a dynamic equilibrium. Number two, biogeochemical cycles. Microbes and decomposers play an essential role in these cycles, which recycle nutrients from dead organic matter so they can be used again. The cycles we need to know about are carbon, phosphorus, and nitrogen. Number three, soil maintenance. Soil is important for a huge variety of reasons. It is a large carbon store so has helped reduce the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. It provides stability and water to plants and is the site of decomposition which releases nutrients from dead organic matter. Number four, interspecies relationships. Food relationships. The fact that heterotrophs, organisms that cannot synthesize their own food, rely on other organisms as a source of energy. We are heterotrophs. Pollination. This process is vital in maintaining plant diversity and a lot of insects play a key role in this, such as bees. Without pollinators, we would not have domestic crops and all of the other resources we get from plants such as fibres and oils. Seed dispersal. Plants grow fruits and flowers to attract animals that can then disperse their seeds wide distances. Lastly, habitat provision. One species providing a habitat for another species. The easiest example of this is trees providing nesting sites for birds. Number five, aesthetic and ethical provisions that we get from nature. There has been lots of research done on how mental and physical health can be improved by being in close proximity to nature. Also provides inspiration and recreational activities to us such as hiking and climbing. Some areas are also seen as sacred in certain religions. You now have an understanding of the reasons why we need to protect biodiversity and keep as much variety out there as possible. Unfortunately, this isn't being done and biodiversity is threatened by a multitude of factors 
that we will look at in the next lesson. Ouch! This is why in some videos I will explain scratches.